Uh, I'm so excited because today we're going to talk about instruments for smart contract testing and how we can test actually the smart contracts. But before that, I just want to say GM and please raise your hands, those of you who know what GM stands for. Okay, good. So GM stands for good morning, but into the crypto world and blockchain world, it is more than a greeting because it expresses that we are still early and young into the technology and we are young adopters and our future is bright. So I just want to say GM to all of you. And before we deep dive into the instruments uh, of the smart contract testing and how we can test actually the smart contracts. Let's first of all learn and understand what is a smart contract actually. So you might think of the smart contracts as simply programs or functions or just a fragment of code that is stored on a dis distributed, decentralized, public ledger technology called blockchain. And those fragments of codes or those functions or those programs can be run when certain predefined conditions are met. Or with other words, you can imagine a smart contract with a function inside this smart contract and this function can distribute amount of tokens to some accounts. This function can be run when certain predefined, predetermined conditions are met. But when we can use and why we can use the smart contracts, smart contracts are typically used to automate the execution of an agreement among participants where all those participants can immediately get the outcome without any kind of third parties or intermediaries into the process and without any time loss. But why it is important to test smart contracts and what is actually a smart contract testing? Testing the smart contracts is the most important part of the process of developing the smart contracts or if you want of developing the decentralized applications or Web3 applications. Because smart contracts commonly need to have interface because users need to interact with them. And even more, the testing is the most important part of improving their security. Why? You're going to ask why. Because unlike the traditional software applications, smart contracts typically cannot be updated after launching them or after deploying them on the mainnet. That's why it's really important and this part is crucial, critical, mandatory, and needs to be done before those contracts go live onto the blockchain. Okay, and why it is important actually to test smart contracts? Just keep in mind that 95% of the smart contracts are high value applications. And if we are going to speak about industries like DeFi, the smart contracts are holding and dealing with high value digital assets. Or if we're going to speak about just valuable items, the well-known NFTs or non-fungible tokens are such an example. And as such, little and small vulnerabilities can lead to big, irreplaceable and irrecoverable loses for users, and you're going to see later on the slides what can happen. Also, as I mentioned, the smart contracts deployed on the blockchain by default are immutable. So, we know different upgradability patterns that can be applied, but instead of um, reducing the immutability and introducing complexity, sometimes the upgradability is not an option because you need to deal with really, really strong and difficult governance processes. So maybe upgradability is not an option. And you need to test, of course, because hacks and exploits can be presented into your smart contracts. Okay, and 
a lot of you will ask what can happen if we don't test our smart contracts. You can see this one. This topic is actually, it happens when I was creating this presentation. It was from two weeks ago. Binance was hacked. Almost half a billion dollars were stolen. The next one, really stupid smart contract bug. 31 millions are stilled, and you can see that they are wishing a good look to the entity that was contacted the hacker with the desperate willing to return the money. Or the next one, the Poly Network. This was from the last year. On the left side, you can see the announcement on Twitter. And to the right side, again, a desperate letter to the hacker explaining that this was the biggest DeFi hack with almost $611 million of digital assets that were stolen with this hack. So I wonder that I answered your question, what can happen if we don't test? OK. What is the process of smart contract testing? And what is the process that we're usually applying on our everyday basis at LimeChain? First of all, the manual testing. Just keep in mind that this process is not mandatory. It's subject, it's subject to change. Depends on the complexity of the smart contracts. But I consider for myself and based on my experience that those are the mandatory steps that you need to perform before deploy or before the main net deployment of the smart contract. So the manual testing. What is a manual testing here? It is internal manual um, execution of the testing scenarios, the testing steps. What does it mean? Um, individuals with high experience sit down and go through the smart contract code manually, step by step internally, even during the pull requests, during the development process, or during the whole cycle of the development process. After that, the good old unit testing is here. The unit testing is performing simple assertions based on predefined um, steps that is testing your smart contract components separately. Uh, later, you're going to see what kind of tools you can use for unit testing. Um, here again, different kind of assertions and what kind of assertions we may have into the smart contracts. For example, only the owner can pause the contract or only the owner can call this function or this account should not have any kind of tokens. Um, at a specific life cycle of the contract, keep in mind that simple contracts may have up to two or 300 unit tests. And I'm going to show you what tools we are using for production testing and dep deploying the smart contracts. Then integration testing. Integration testing is one level higher than the unit testing because you can test how the different components of those contracts are working together. Even we can have uh, contracts that are communicating between each other. And this is the place where you can test that they can work together and you're expecting their behavior. Then the most important part of all these parts is the third party audit. What does it mean and what it is used for? This is a separate entity, external company, that is auditing your contract here. It is time effort and money effort operation because it is really slow and you have to reserve your spot uh, a lot of time before you even start to develop your smart contract. The external audit is public as well, which helps to your DAP or application or Web3 application to be uh, well-known into the community and to prove that you're not doing a scam or to prove that you are not going to steal the tokens or the digital assets of the users that want to stake, for example, into your product. Uh, the third party audit is doing also a security audit with different kind of instruments, even with manual testing again. It is a really slow process, but 
it is really important because even though this audit is public, as I said, and everybody can uh, access it and go through it and see what are the potential vulnerabilities and bugs. Um, actually, it is uh, uh, separated on steps. You may have different kind of um, interactions with uh, the entity that is auditing your contracts in order to fix uh, the vulnerabilities and the security flaws. And then the bug bounties. What is the bug bounty? It is um, reward connected. You can uh, actually run your product on a test network and you can open the bug bounty program to a group of community of developers or hackers where they can point potential vulnerabilities and earn rewards for that. Only with pointing them or even with fixing them, it depends. The bug bounty is a little bit similar to the, per to the third party audit because you are again asking for help from other users to find potential vulnerabilities in your smart contracts, but it's also a little bit different because into the third party audit, the teams or the people that are doing it have more narrow thinking, where into the bug bounty programs, they are, attract, they are attracting uh, different kind of hackers, white hackers with different kind of thinking, which may help to uh, find different kind of bugs into your contracts. And actually, what kind of instruments you can use, and we prove that they are really useful, and we use them into the Lime chain through the whole process of developing the centralized applications, not only testing, but deploying them, compile the smart contracts, perform different tests uh, from the processes that you saw. The first one is hardhead. Uh, a little uh, message here. Before the hard hat, there was Truffle, there was other kind of libraries. We even have our internal framework that we do it by ourselves, we develop it by ourselves. Uh, it was um, created with the help of one of the best libraries. Uh, for Web3 development, it suggests Hardhead is an Ethereum development and deployment tool which you can use not only to test your smart contracts, but to compile them, to deploy them, to verify them, and even to upgrade them. You can use different kind of upgradability patterns together with this kind of framework. And it's again built on Ethers.js, and we are kind of contributors to that library, and the Hardhead is using modul modularity, so everybody can write his own model. And how the unit tests may look like, here you can see that uh, different assertions can be created. And here, this is an example that we should not have any tokens to the contract at a specific stage of the contract. And imagine two, three, even 500 of these kind of tests that you can run with a simple comment. Um, Hardhead is uh, running local own network that you can use immediately to run and test your smart contracts because the other scenario is to test your smart contracts against some kind of test network, which is slow during, uh, because of the specifics of the blockchain. Um, you can use the hardhead even to uh, check what is your code coverage. Here you can see that uh, a specific contract has 100% code coverage, but the other ones, we still need to perform unit tests because we have uncovered lines. Then the next type of tools that you can use is fuzzers. What are the fuzzers? The fuzzers are attacking your functions or giving to your functions different kind of uh, malformed data to check what those functions will do with this kind of malformed data because maybe a dangerous operation can be performed when this kind of uh, data is reaching your input params of the uh, functions. For example, here what we have, you can see that here we are checking a lot of things. We are asserting the math, 
we are rounding down the numbers, we also revert on overflow, and performing such tools as Echidna or fuzzing tools, you can see that our smart contract is passing those tests. Here, think about of like 20 or 30,000 different tests that are running against your smart contract functions. It's something like penetration testing, but just for functions. Uh, and the next one, it's my trio. You can use such tools for static analysis of your smart contract, and you can potentially point kind of security flaws here, and I'm going to show you what I'm meaning. The last function, it doesn't uh, um, mean the name, but he here we have a really important solidity um, command here, or solidity line, that what this function will do. It will delete all the byte codes of your contract uh, where this contract is deployed and will send all the funds or all the balance or all the money that this smart contract is holding to this address. And this function is really dangerous. And as you can see, it's marked only as public. What does it mean? It means that everybody can call that function. And this is really dangerous because everybody can delete your smart contract, actually. And what these tools are actually doing they are telling you that you have unprotected self-destruct. And imagine a large system of such kind of smart contracts, and you may miss something, and you may have 100% code coverage, but you may just... Um, you may just have this kind of unprotected functions that are doing dangerous uh, stuff with the solidity on the low level, and such tools will help you to protect your smart contracts. And for the conclusion, I can say that there is not a single method of testing a smart contract. You need to play with the different scenarios and approaches in order to deliver a 100% secured application, which, based on my experience, is not possible, actually, because we can see that those hacks, this does not mean that they do not test. They test a lot, but we can still find some kind of flaws, issues, that we can then use them for hacking the contract. But testing and doing the different kind of audits will give you um, more, let's say, uh, time. And then, with the developing of the Solidity code, and especially if you um, do upgradability, you have it on the architecture level because you cannot just upgrade every contract. You just need to think about it before you start to create your smart contract. You need to create your architecture to be able to uh, give you the upgradability. You need to play with different kind of storage addresses, memory reservation, etc., etc. This is a really complicated task, but with the development of the language, you may address those security flaws and upgrade them. And that's why the testing of the smart contracts is one of the most important parts during the development. Now it's time for questions. Uh, just a second, the mic is coming. To ask uh, that methodology as test-driven development, does it make sense for smart contracts no, at all? No. no, actually it doesn't make sense, the test-driven development, because the solidity is still limited and you need to perform different limitations and you need to take them into account because, first of all, you need to think about gas optimization, then the limitations of the language, then the, uh, the whole uh, ecosystem or how the EVM-based blockchain works, or not EVM-based, but blockchains that you can use your smart contracts, what kind of uh, consensus mechanisms they are using. So I don't think that the test-driven development is a really good approach here because of the behavior of the whole ecosystem. I thought that as far as a unit test is there, doesn't, uh, there are no uh, um, 
what 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 uh, says against just to start with unit test, make it failing, and after that uh, um, fix it in the code like DDD normally uh, prescribes. Yeah, but keep in mind that uh, unit testing cannot solve uh, different problems with overflowing data types, for example, or uh, your smart contracts often are relying on off-chain services. Unit testing cannot catch that because you're testing different fragments of your code, but not the integration testing or not how the whole uh, system will behave. That's why, yeah, you can start with the unit testing, but it's not only your single option. You're going to fix everything with the unit testing. You're going to get 100% code coverage, but it doesn't, this doesn't mean nothing because you may still be hacked, you may still miss something, as you saw here. So I can get 100% code coverage of that smart contract, and I can miss that and deploy that on the mainnet, and then somebody will came, will up, uh, call that function with his address, will delete my contract, and will steal my money. Okay, okay thanks.